Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Team Lee Services Limited Q3 FY23 earnings conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the call over to Ms. Aditi Patil from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you Aditi. Thank you, Zico. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining Team Lee's earnings call. Thank you, Team Lee's management, for giving us the opportunity to host the Q3 FY23 earnings call. We have with us today Mr. Ashok Reddy, Managing Director and CEO, Ms. Rituparna Chakravarti, Co-Founder and Executive Director, Team Lee's, and CEO Degree Apprenticeship, Mr. Sunil CEO Specialized Staffing and Ms. Ramni Dutti, CFO. We will start off with the remarks from management, after which we will open the floor for Q&A session. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ashok Reddy. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Aditi. And uh, welcome all of you to the conference call. Um, just as a, a, a earlier update, uh, I think at the group level, our revenue grew 26% on a year-on-year -year basis and 3% quarter-on-quarter basis. However, we have uh, noticed a much weaker festive demand in Q3 uh, compared to prior years. Um, I think, and that's kind of. Uh, accounting for the net uh, growth in general staffing that we've had uh, of only about 3,000 uh, for the quarter. Um, I think uh, we did add headcounts uh, in the early part of the quarter in October and November, but we've had a much higher attrition and the end of uh, festival onboarding uh, in the December uh, month. And I think if we extend into IT staffing, also we've had a growth in headcount uh, of about 400 uh, for the quarter, but uh, relatively flat from a billing perspective, uh, given the furloughs and uh, lower billing days in quarter three. Uh, I think for us, the biggest uh, hit has actually come from the degree apprentice uh, side, uh, where, uh, and Ritu will cover that in more detail, but the NEEM program, uh, a gazetted uh, program from AICT, Higher Education Department, has been discontinued effective uh, December. As a run-up to that and post uh, the discontinuation, uh, we've had to uh, let go of nearly 20,000 trainees uh, who were under the training program under NEEM. And uh, even currently, we have further exposure of about 26,000 under NEEM that we are in dialogue with customers for continuation, moving them to other uh, areas and so on. So overall, uh, I think uh, that kind of puts the pressure on the element of the headcount and you know the bottom line contribution as we go forward for the coming quarters. And in HR services, there has been a delay in university billings from Q3 to Q4, uh, which broadly from the commentary we do seem to believe uh, should uh, get done uh, in Q4. So I think overall a weaker festive demand in general staffing and headwinds uh, in specialized staffing uh, have impacted our growth. Uh, the NEEM uh, is a surprise uh, element with the notification uh, being uh, uh, canceled. And uh, we have started working on alternate placement of apprentices uh, of the 26,000 across other alternate options. Uh, however, given all of that, uh, there will be uh, some pressure on margins for the coming quarters uh, with the soft demand realization pressure, name impact. Um, we have taken the necessary actions on uh, core headcount that we had called out in Q2 uh, in rationalizing it in line with the softening of the market. 
and we do have a reduction of about 200 uh, core head count, uh, which is about 9% uh, of our uh, head count uh, in Q3. Uh, we do have some further adjustments that will happen in Q4 also, uh, in line with how the market is, and uh, that's something that we will continuously uh, look at as we go forward. Uh, from a staffing perspective, uh, broadly, the other uh, parameters of um, uh, PAPM, uh, productivity, uh, core employee headcounts, and all have been in line with the revenues and the top line. Uh, even the CTCs, the hiring uh, has improved. Uh, overall in terms of what we deliver to customers. So no major call-outs of a huge deviation uh, happening in the staffing business as we look at it at this point, other than the softer festive uh, quarter. And uh, we will continue to look at seeing which verticals to focus on for driving uh, growth as we go forward. Uh, Ritu will cover on a little more detail on DA, uh, Sunil on uh, specialized staffing, and then uh, Ramani overall before we get into the questions. Thank you, Ashok. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, like as mentioned, already shared by uh, Ashok, um, I think uh, the mean program has been discontinued with effect December 23rd, 2022 wherein we had to release 20,000 trainees who were under various short-term training programs. We have exposure of another 26,000 trainees under NEEM program who shall be migrated and new onboardings to move in um, dialogue with the customers to our own, which is the team lease apprenticeship quota, the client apprenticeship quota under the Apprenticeship Act and degree apprenticeship programs. PBT for the quarter has remained flat as exits remained effective end of December. The impacts will show up in Q4 numbers. Outside of this, we have maintained a steady momentum in new logo acquisitions, having added 20 new logos, taking our YTD count to almost 70. Um, hiring contribution to growth um, uh, remained constant. The non-recruiter channel contribution to overall hiring additions have been around 60%, and the overall conversion has uh, definitely gone up to about 33%, as against about 28 last quarter. However, uh, we are not where we would like uh, us to be, given that uh, the overall volume of open positions have been showing a declining trend on month-on-month -on -month basis uh, and is much below our expectations. Just to update you a little more on the recent surprise developments, NEEM, which is the National Employability Enhancement Mission, it's a gazetted notification scheme um, under the Ministry of Education run by AICTE. Uh, it has been, <laughs> uh, in spite of there being a renewal uh, beginning of December, uh, suddenly closed by way of a notification circulated on 3rd Jan, putting almost 2 lakh active apprentices, future livelihood, and learning in a precarious position. Representation has been made by us with the AICT and Ministry of Education to offer clarity on the future of the existing apprentices already enrolled, which from the notification is completely unclear, causing a lot of anxiety to both organizations as well as apprentices. We have, in addition, initiated legal deliberations by way of filing a stay order to ensure the existing lot of apprentices can be retained. Uh, we are assessing the impact of this new development closely and shall uh, duly keep you uh, informed. Thank you so very much. So we know it here. Thanks, Ritu. Good evening, everyone. Q3 is normally a seasonally weak quarter for specialized staffing. Hiring in IT sector has still not recovered while uh, we were able to benefit from the hiring of tech and non-tech. Uh, however, the volumes are not comparable at this point of time. Most of our IT customers have either stopped or slowed down on hiring with focus shifting towards improving the utilization factor. Unfortunately, the cautious approach of our customers also percolated to staff augmentation, which ideally should not have been the case, 
as in this market stock augmentation is the best option our headcount grew 2% quarter on quarter basis and is broadly flattish when compared to the same period of the last fiscal year the revenue grew 4% year on year basis and quarter on quarter basis it's broadly flat although we have seen marginal headcount growth the revenue stay flat on account of leaves and furloughs in q3 impacting the profits for this quarter we continue to focus on client acquisition and were able to back 43 new logos ytd including 18 strategic client wins the client wins are mix of tech and non tech keeping in view our long term strategy to build a balanced portfolio with uncertain macroeconomic trend geopolitical turmoil inflation and rising interest rate we are uncertain on the compounding effect it will have on our client's hiring strategy we shall continue to focus on client acquisition better fulfillment ratio and improve operational efficiency we are confident of bettering our q4 numbers compared to q3 however for the full year it will still remain flattish thank you thank you to me good evening all we had about 3000 headcount growth in staffing business in q3 excluding the name closure exists of 20000 as of the result december ebitda and operating margins have been flat on a quarter on quarter basis however there is a dip year on year because of reduced contribution from it staffing and delay in edtech business compared to q3 of last year the quarter on quarter drop in pbt is on account of a few write backs non recurring write backs and one time hiring revenues unallocated ebitda is now brought back to the regular quarterly run rate level so given the lower than expected closure of q3 run rate in staffing mean closure in ea business and overall external demand environment we are projecting q4 profitability to be flat or lower than q3 accordingly we are bringing down our internal costs and core headcounts for the next few quarters in terms of income tax refunds we have completed assessments up to financial year 2021 and the refunds can be credited over the next few months so there are no new queries that are received on adjjwl front only the previous year fy 2022 assessment is pending as of now with no other backlog our current tax position is 270 crore and by end of the year including tax refunds we expect the number to go up to 350 crore we currently do not have any active mnd discussions in the pipeline thank you aditi you can take the question thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles Our first question is from the line of Vidit Shah with IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Um, just uh, my, my first question was on on this NIM program uh, where uh, 20k or uh, 20,000 associates have been uh, let go off and 26 are uh, have further exposure. Um, could you just uh, i mean it, it's quite basic but just how this works in the sense why why not 46 have been let gone off uh, i mean if the program's been discontinued uh, shouldn't all associates be let go off immediately so the thing is that the ones that have been let go off have been on account of clients uh, certain clients choosing to kind of offer them and they have been because of the unrest caused some attrition from the trainee side as well but largely on account of certain organization taking that call uh, however the balance essentially the organizations have uh, are at the moment choosing to 
retain until and unless there is ample clarity provided from the AICT and Ministry of Education on, because the notification as such, it can be, it, can, it need not necessarily be interpreted as the ones who are existing. However, it's a gray area. Uh, however, uh, we are actively talking to these organizations because they have a clear intent to continue with these apprentices to uh, move them or shift them to alternates uh, around the Apprenticeship Act, which is using their own quota of apprenticeship, using our quota of apprenticeship, and also to degree apprenticeship wherever we can. So I think, uh, and of course, the, 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 this is something which will start becoming clearer over the next uh, month of next two, three months. Uh, meanwhile, from our side, we have put all our weight behind getting a legal uh, stay order in place, uh, filed for one, and filing for one, and we've also made a very active, aggressive representation with the AICTs that at least, because this, is, this means the future and livelihood of uh, not just our trainees, overall 200,000 apprentices across India, and their stipend, and as well as their learning, to be honest. So, so I think with it, the uh, extension of that uh, is that, you know, ideally a scheme that's in place uh, could have a glide path to an exit, which is to say that people who have already been onboarded as trainees uh, should effectively finish that training period or kind of uh, exit as they do uh, as a part of uh, natural attrition. and. The a notification could be to the effect that you know you don't onboard anybody new and kind of keep feeding that pond. Uh, so I think while some organizations have taken it as a closure and wanted to kind of uh, exit, uh, some do want to give the benefit of continuance to the trainees, uh, and that's really where representations have been made to AICT about an acknowledgement that no new onboardings of trainees will happen under the scheme, but to give continuity for those who have already uh, been onboarded uh, till the training period uh, complete. Uh, similarly, as Ritu was mentioning, we are also exploring uh, legal options uh, for a stay to create continuity for these people. So I think the continuance of the 26,000 uh, is more a uh, customer choice at this point in time, uh, where there is dialogue to see whether they will continue, whether you know they, we can migrate them to alternate options and so on. So, so just to clarify, we're still being paid uh, four to six hundred rupees per trainee per month yes. uh, by the existing customers for the yes, two, for yes. the ones that are not like that. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. And what's the average training period in the sense? Let's say if this program were to be discontinued and the existing ones uh, were to you know allowed to be complete their training, after what period would you know uh, all these associates be let go? No? So it's normally a three-year training program uh, that is there for the NEEM aspect. Uh, by natural uh, element of completion, about 9,000 of the 26,000 uh, will complete in the next year. Uh, so in the next financial year, about 9,000 will complete. Over and above that, we also have to factor some natural attrition that does happen on this front. Okay, understood. Uh, also, could you uh, just... Um shed some light on uh, you know the other hr services i mean um, you know uh, a few call, uh, quarters back we had guided to around eight to nine percent of ebitda margin uh, now i understand some of the billing has been delayed so uh, would we catch up to the extent and achieve our margin target or you know <laughs> is this expected to be impacted by uh, delayed billing so I don't think the full year should get impacted uh, at this point in time with it because the indication from the counterparty entities of universities and institutions is that the billing would happen in Q4 because services have been delivered. And uh, from that perspective, I think the belief that the Q4 billing should happen with no further delay at this point in time and should come back to the uh, yearly 8% uh, that we had indicated. 
Okay, got it. And just lastly, if I could bother you for the data point, could you, uh, uh, you know, disclose the cash flows for 3Q and for the year to date for the company or the operating cash flows? Uh, so currently we are at 70% conversion of EBITDA on operating cash flow. So that uh, uh, stands for full year nine months as well as for the quarter. And, and over and above that, given two years assessment is done, uh, we are expecting that money to come in over the next three to four months. So we already received assessment orders for uh, FY20 and FY19. So between the two years, we are expecting refunds of about 80 crores. So in the next few months, uh, so that will uh, be added to our cash balance. Okay, uh, thanks. That's very helpful. I'll get back in queue. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder, to ask a question, please press star and one on a touchstone telephone. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Somitra Chatterjee with Avendis Park. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening and thanks for the opportunity. Ashok, just uh, wanted to check on this uh, decision of this February 3rd board meeting to proceed with a buyback, uh, why are we not uh, contemplating increasing the dividend payout? Uh, that is one. And second question to Ramni is on the ad tech side, what is the impact of in third quarter the revenue that you have, revenue and EBITDA that you have lost because of you were unable to bill? Yeah. So just on the February 3rd meeting, I think the board wanted to deliberate, uh, no decision taken yet, uh, around the fact of our uh, current cash reserves and the refund that is happening or expected to happen for the two assessment uh, years. And our uh, m and pipeline has depleted uh, a little bit. Uh, we don't have as many active dialogues as we were in the past uh, having, uh, given you know, uh, early due diligence findings and uh, also the element of uh, counterparty issues and so on. So while we do have some dialogue going on, the pipeline for inorganic is not very large. So I think from that perspective, the board wanted to deliberate on the capital allocation uh, with the fact that we would have in excess of about 300 odd crores by the end of the year. Uh, as to what to do as a next step. Uh, so I think uh, we, what, I mean, we, we just uh, could, uh, couldn't complete that dialogue. They have initiated it and we'll be taking it up at the Fed third meeting. So, uh, sure. so Mr. on the ETEC billing, uh, so about three crore uh, in revenue is what got delayed to Q4. So the same three crore will be the impact on EBITDA level as well because all the related costs have already been taken into consideration. And in fourth quarter, you would be billing, including this three crores, which has been lost in this quarter. So regular billing plus third quarter. And above their regular uh, Q4 billing, this would be additional. So that's how uh, uh, we are saying that on a full year basis, we'll get to 7-8% EBITDA margin on HR services. Okay. And one more question to Ritu. Uh, what would be the annual impact of assuming that the NetApp business is discontinued and uh, from FI24, there will be no uh, more NetApp trainees. What would be the annual impact on the EBITDA? It would be about 10 crores. Uh, so we, uh, from a top line perspective, I mean, from a net revenue perspective, it would be about 22 uh, crores. Uh, and from an EBITDA perspective, uh, it would be around 10 to 11 crores. Okay. And uh, lastly, on this unallocable expenses, historically it used to be about uh, six to seven crores. Uh, do we see the 10 crore number on a quarterly basis reaching there or it will remain at uh, the current level? So it can uh, remain at the current 10 crore per quarter under its own uh, And uh, with no other cost increasing for next year as well, we believe plus minus we can maintain this run rate. Okay. Uh, thanks. That's all from my side. Thank you.
Thank you. A reminder, to ask a question, please press star and 1 on your touchstone telephone. Our next question is from the line of Krunal Shah with Enam Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on general staffing. You know, in terms of sectors, you know, can you spell out as into which is seeing some traction for general staffing in terms of new clients and where are we seeing a slowdown? Yeah, so I think, uh, like I said, the festive uh, element of a volume we did not see kind of across the board. Uh, it was quite muted. But overall, if we look at it for the quarter and for the nine months, uh, BFSI and consumer uh, have kind of been uh, growing. Uh, where we have seen an element of actually uh, negative uh, is in what we call emerging, uh, which is uh, the element of fintech, uh, edtech, uh, and other new uh, sector sectors that uh, play out on volumes for us. Uh, and some of the e-commerce uh, has also been uh, relatively uh, soft. Um, I think uh, industrial has kind of been flattish, hasn't been growing uh, at the rate that we would have uh, uh, expected, and telecom has kind of been flattish. Uh, so I would say two verticals have been positive, two have been flattish, and two have been on the negative uh, overall. But uh, typically, uh, consumer and BFSI are where we normally get uh, element of a festive uh, volume kicker, which has been more muted this year. Got it. So in terms of you know the headcount growth, uh, the guidance that you used to maintain of 20%, uh, do we still uh, seem, seem it to be possible in FY24? So we used to normally have a 14-15% uh, associate uh, growth. Uh, I think overall this time we would have uh, slightly lower than that and also I mean IT has been impacted and uh, the DA impact has been quite uh, substantial uh, on account of the notification. Uh, so while purely in staffing I think we will have uh, we have had and will have the associate uh, growth, uh, we are impacted from the other two uh, verticals. So overall, I don't think we will be at that. So at a revenue level, we will still end up uh, with about a 20 plus percent uh, growth. Uh, the associate growth will be a little more muted. No, so I was talking more about FY24, the year afterwards. Not oh, so, I mean, early to call that out uh, at this point, Kunal, uh, primarily from the perspective that uh, in specialized staffing, um, IT is still quite uh, uncertain about how the future is holding out. So, like uh, Sunil had called out earlier, we have managed to keep it flat for the year. Uh, but, uh, you know, normally December is when most of the companies have, do their internal planning and kind of come back uh, with their outlook for the coming year. Uh, we still haven't heard uh, from the companies around their outlook for the coming year. So I think to that extent, um, in specialized staffing, we aren't very sure how things are going to play out, though in some companies we are uh, getting feedback about some vendor consolidations to happen and so on. Uh, from a DA perspective, uh, clearly the 26,000 uh, could be a potential risk, uh, which we will try and mitigate uh, by conversion into other uh, avenues of onboarding that we could do, uh, and also have to drive uh, the natural growth uh, that comes about. I think in uh, staffing, uh, some of the sectors we are getting positive feedback around uh, demand that they are having and uh, potential open position pipeline that they are giving to us. Uh, but I wouldn't yet say that it is back to, you know, across sectors and across companies, a very aggressive open position situation at this point in time. So I, I think as a wait and watch, we will have to see uh, how the macros play out uh, for us to be more uh, clear uh, about 
the associate growth for next year. But clearly, uh, what we are doing as against for the current year, you know, where as a run up from last year, uh, we expected the demand to be very high and had made large investments in our core team uh, for delivery for customers. Uh, this year, we are taking the reverse approach of saying, you know, let us rationalize our headcounts, let's reduce the cost. And only on the back of uh, clear demand coming in, we will start uh, adding back the headcounts. So just to add on the associate headcount growth, run, last year, FI22, we had 22% growth. And the Q1, we had 12,000. Uh, so uh, uh, we thought we can sustain the 20% growth in headcount this year as well. But Q3 is a big surprise. Uh, uh, because we usually have the highest tradition in Q3 in a year uh, because of the 50 mm -hmm. which didn't reflect. And so that would bring down the associate headcount growth on a clear basis uh, to maybe 14, 15 percent kind of level. Got it, got it. So, uh, and also this 10-11 uh, crore hit that you said uh, on NetApps, you know, if uh, if this program is withdrawn, that would only be for the NIEM program, right? Because we yes. also have certain additional headcount in NetApps. Yes, so we have a total headcount as of now of about 59,000, uh, of which 26,000 are in NIEM, and the other uh, headcount would continue. Okay, got it, got it. And so, the, okay. And so, just uh, help me explain, uh, I'm actually not, not aware, how is the degree apprenticeship program different from NIEM? And, you know, where, how can you transfer from one to the other? So uh, the thing is, uh, the degree apprenticeship program, essentially the one big advantage is will be under the Apprenticeship Act. But most importantly, I think uh, this allows for there being a degree linkage, essentially with the apprenticeship program, uh, which means the attractiveness of this particular option from a candidate perspective, the long-term gains for the organization uh, from this program definitely is there. That's essentially the outside view or the customer benefit view of it. Um, uh, the, the more important thing is that this allows organizations to have apprenticeship for a longer duration, which is three years, as against the NAPS or the Apprenticeship Act program, which mm -hmm. kind of mandates or restricts it to one year, right? Okay. Okay. So uh, in case of NEEM, of course, there was a flexibility of having people for three years. Uh, however, given in the absence of NEEM today, the degree apprenticeship definitely stands out as a very attractive proposition for customers. So I think uh, just to add on to that, uh, it's a layer on top uh, where uh, there is historically most of the apprenticeship training programs were certificate driven uh, for a shorter term period. Uh, but our belief is that at the profile of candidates that are coming in for learning on the job, uh, creating a corridor effect for a degree uh, helps from a retention perspective and also from a learning outcome perspective. So I think it's longer engagement uh, coupled with the aspect that uh, the signaling value of a degree is always better than that of a certificate program. Uh, and just one more thing I'd like to add, this degree essentially is a UGC and NCVT approved curriculum and hence uh, the apprentices uh, and it's credit based, which means that this is something which uh, holds good for them to have mobility in their learning process. So mm -hmm. essentially starts with a certificate program, a diploma program, an associate degree, and can be scaled up to a degree program. So it's a lot more uh, fungible, flexible, even from the candidate perspective. Got it, got it. And also on the financial benefit to the client, so one was the tax advantage. So that remains the same in both cases? So the set-off against uh, CSR expense will not be there. Okay. The so the, the thing is that uh, the, the financial benefits is twofold from the apprenticeship program. Mm -hmm. One was that uh, does it qualify for set off against the CSR, uh, you know, criteria? 
So uh, this does, uh, in many ways, actually uh, qualifies under the skill development category for organization. So some organizations do uh, ben uh, take a benefit out of it. But more importantly, there is a subsidy which comes to uh, from the government side for every trainee up to one year. Uh, earlier, it used to be directly coming into organization as a, as a reimbursement. But now that has moved to the trainee directly getting up to 1500 per month. Hmm. Uh, however, uh, as you can see with schemes and benefits, and uh, it's there today, but we don't know really the continuity of it in future. Okay, got it. Thanks. And uh, one last question. In terms of the core headcount for us, uh, where would we stand right now? Uh, the current number is about 2200. And, and the markup for Q3 in general stuff? Uh, it's kind of flattish at around 695. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kronal. Um, yeah, I may request you. you that you return to the question queue for follow up questions as there are several participants waiting for their turn. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Asim Barde with. DAM Capital Advisors Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks. Uh, so just uh, one question was on the specialized staffing margins. Uh, you are at sub 7% in Q3. Adjusting for the lower billable uh, hours, uh, etc., is it still a 9% odd EBITDA margin in Q3? So uh, we always maintained around uh, between 8 to 9 percentage. So uh, we should be able to uh, maintain a uh, margin. I mean, at this By point in time, uh, given his Q4 uh, outlook, he should get back to that eight yeah. to nine percent. Okay, so Q4 he should be back to eight yeah. to nine percent. Got it. Uh, secondly, on the general staffing bit, uh, I, I, the previous, I think you answered it partly in the previous uh, participants' question, but just wanted to get a sense. And for the year uh, on general staffing headcount growth, that should still be around 13 to 13 to 14 percent, right? For FI23. That's right, Arjun. Uh, it should be around 14 percent on a full year basis. And in mm. terms of revenue growth, we would be at uh, 20 21 percent growth. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, inflation also factored. And prior uh, pieces. Got it, got it. And uh, can you just, uh, just one clarification. I think in Q2 we had the skills business bloating other income and unallocated expenses. Is that not there in Q3? No, skills business is still there in Q3 as well. However, we don't have any new provisions hitting on account of skills business. But you had shifted the the reporting from revenue to other income, right? Because it was in sunset mode or something. That, that's what I was expecting. Correct, correct. So the income levels have remained flat, Shasin. Only difference between Q2 to Q3 is in Q2 there is a provision that we made on skills okay. business on account of delayed collection. So we don't have any incremental provision made under unallocated. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, thanks. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. A reminder, to ask a question, please press star 1 on a touchstone telephone. Our next question is from the line of Amit Chandra with HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So my question is related to you know, uh, the, you know, the closure of the main program. So what was the rationale behind you know, closing the program? And was it expected, uh, or we were expecting, you know, some, uh, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, closures to happen, or it was an, you know, surprise for us also. And also in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the revenue impact, as the, uh, you know, uh, you know, as the as the closure happened at the end of at the end of December, so the impact on the headcount we have seen. But uh, you know, have we seen the impact, uh, the full impact uh, will come in the next quarter? Yeah. Yeah, so the full impact will come in the next quarter, Amit, uh, from that uh, perspective. But I think uh, just to add, I mean, all the headcount didn't, uh, so one, to answer the prior question, uh, while the notification to uh, 
end uh, was kind of in the coming, uh, though it was, when it did come, it was a surprise, and to the nature of how it was worded, it was a surprise. I think the rationale or the approach that the government was taking is that there certain, it was kind of uh, throw the baby out with the bathwater kind of a situation where some of the authorized vendors uh, were misusing the provisions of the Neem Gazetted scheme and uh, they wanted to correct that, but instead of so-called correcting it, they have ended it. Uh, so there have been, uh, you know, uh, the government has been in talks with the vendor partners uh, who are authorized to roll the scheme uh, to create corrective action and so on. Uh, we believe that it would, you know, be better enforcement that would get driven, uh, not an ending of the scheme, per se. Okay. And, and the, uh, in terms of the margins, uh, we have been saying uh, no, that the, you know, uh, no, the, the general staffing margins are at bottom uh, for the last few quarters, but we are still seeing some, uh, no, some of the other headwind that is coming up every quarter. So how how we see the margins from here on? And the HR staffing margins are also you know, like yet to recover, and the margins for the specialized staffing is also coming down. So how to see the um, like margins for uh, FI24? Is it is it going to uh, know, be under pressure uh, or can we see some recovery there? So I think there will be uh, at least two three quarters of softening on the margins front as a translation of the uh, volumes going down and uh, the aspect of seasonality that does exist in the uh, HR services front where typically Q3, Q4 is large for them while this Q3 has been not so high. Uh, like Ramani had called out, it has been moved to Q4, so there'll be a strong Q4, but they open with a very weak Q1 uh, as always. Uh, specialized staffing also has kind of been flat, which is the other driver to margin improvement. Uh, so kind of a outlook on uh, growth coming back in there uh, is going to be uh, key. Uh, I think general staffing, the aspect of margin pressure, uh, given that you know 75% of our billing is on a fixed markup model, uh, has been under pressure at a percentage level, uh, given the wage escalations uh, that kind of uh, happened last year and probably to some extent will happen uh, next year. Uh, but the variables of productivity and all of that have been playing out uh, at that end. Uh, in Q, like I called out a little earlier uh, on that front, Amit, um, I think in uh, this financial year we made a conscious call on the uh, head, uh, on the uh, tailwinds of last year's uh, growth and client outlooks to add a lot of headcount and cost structures. Uh, going into the coming year, we will hold all of that constant uh, to the as other than you know, revisions, uh, annual revision that would happen in Q1 uh, to effectively back-ending costs and hirings uh, to actual demand growth uh, that comes in uh, from customers. So I think, uh, I, I take your point, uh, some surprise or the other. Uh, so the next two, three quarters, we do expect it to be softer. Uh, but later on, I think if uh, business sustains uh, at the rate that, uh, you know, even current year has been, uh, we should be able to uh, recover on the margins front. Okay, sir. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Nitin Padmanaban, investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, I just uh, wanted your thoughts on the how the open positions look both in, uh, you know, specialized staffing and general staffing. I think in the last quarter on specialized staffing, you mentioned that the open positions are down 70%. Uh, uh, so how, how should we sort of uh, think about this? Uh, how is it at, at, this, at, at the current point in time? And how should we think about this on a going forward basis? Uh, the second question was on 
uh, uh, the margins well you mentioned that margins will remain soft uh, are you uh, uh, next quarter we should see a bounce back in other hr services margins and specialized staffing as well uh, so are you suggesting that margins will remain soft despite that or uh, are you speaking about next year uh, those were the two questions thank you so uh, sorry i'll just answer the second question uh, before sunil gets into the first one uh, i think uh, while you know the seasonality element i mean not the furlough and the lower billable days of q3 will go away uh, there'll be a, a marginal bounce back of that 1% uh, in specialized staffing uh, margins um the aspect of uh, the uh, hr services will bounce back with the backlog uh, of the revenues that uh, didn't happen in q3 happening in q4 uh, the neem impact is really uh, what will be large uh, from a perspective for the full quarter and i think that is really where we are expecting a softness rather than anything uh, else uh i think broadly in general staffing also at this point in time uh in addressing the first part of the question uh there is demand uh of open positions that is with us across some of the sectors i wouldn't say it's across all sectors but at least three four sectors do have uh active open positions with us uh with an outlook of that they will be looking at growth in q4 so i think we're still looking at a positive uh, number coming into play for staffing uh, in q4 uh, and um, you know continuance on that from a specialized staffing perspective personal uh, goals yeah so q3 is normally uh, seasonally weak quarter for hiring so uh, the demands were uh, pretty low uh, however uh, if you look at uh, q2 q3 uh, both the quarters the uh, demand uh, the fulfillment from uh, our point of view has been around 60 uh, 65% uh, of the demands what we used to get earlier so uh, uh, normally by this period we uh, get to know how the q4 is going to be but unfortunately as of now we don't have clarity so we are hoping that uh, uh, some hiring might pick up uh, in the next quarter and that will help us to get a glide path towards next year but i think uh, underlying of that uh, nitin effectively is that at this point in time open positions are still 70 75% down from what they used to be uh, december which is where typically uh, it company planning happens and they come back with a uh, outlook and uh, larger open positions hasn't yet happened uh, we are hopeful having said that we have also uh, at the back end adjusted uh, headcounts in the specialized staffing business in a large way uh, and would kind of rebuild uh, basis the aspect of demand coming back sure fair enough and lastly how much would be the overall headwind on revenue and margin for, from the neem impact for uh, the next uh, for what, what we already know for next quarter would have to uh, work that in completely uh, nitin not yet uh, factored in uh, because we've been actually working on the overall base and how to protect it and how to uh, reassign it and so on so wouldn't have a number immediately but uh, could come back sure fair enough thank you so much and all the very best thank you before we take the next question a reminder to all participants that you may press star and 1 to ask a question a reminder to all participants you may press star and 1 to ask a question A reminder to all participants you may press star and 1 to ask a question <coughs> To ask a question please press star and 1 on a touch tone telephone 
as there are no um, further questions. Actually, if there are no further questions, um, I, I mean, maybe there, there was a little time between the announcing of the results and people's uh, absorbing of the numbers. Um, I could just uh, conclude uh, to say that, you know, we, we, did, we did have a surprise uh, from the NEEM perspective. Uh, we are trying to mitigate uh, as much as possible from other 26,000 trainees that are still there. Uh, there has been an element of a seasonality uh, push uh, from the HR services, and there is still uh, uncertainty from the specialized staffing uh, demand uh, perspective. Uh, I think uh, we, we, we do have some softness uh, across the businesses that is playing out uh, into the margins and the growth uh, per se. But I think uh, our preparation this year will be very different from how we entered uh, last financial year. Um, and from that perspective, uh, like I called out, we would have two, three quarters of softness in margins uh, with the glide path of the business trajectory, uh, we should be able to start uh, getting back to uh, improvement on the margins front as we go forward. Um, I think uh, we are still, there, there is demand uh, coming in from some of the verticals for staffing, and we continue to deliver uh, on that uh, front. Uh, as of now, there are no headwind, uh, broader headwind uh, views uh, for the general staffing business other than the fact that the festive season was clearly uh, lower than anything that we have seen uh, in the past. Uh, so we will continue to stay uh, prudent uh, around the cost structures. Uh, we will rebuild teams and costs in line with the demand and the macro situation coming to uh, play out on that front. And I think uh, we will effectively look at the element of capital allocation in line with, you know, uh, the market and uh, the utilization that we have uh, into the future. Uh, with that, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect. Your